so good. Okay, so let's jump back in and get started on our last project for the course. If you're going on the BIS 155, I'm happy to tell you that the first few weeks are going to be a review for you, and you should very much enjoy it. All right, so what paste a copied cell? Since we don't see paste, control V. Is going to be my guess. A graphic file format that supports transparency. Um, I think I'm going with PNG on that one. Used to rearrange slides, the slide sorter, slide layout for viewing two. To list. Hey, hang on one second, please. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not guaranteeing all of these are right. We're gonna check them here in a minute and see if they're see if they are. Slide layout for viewing to list. Mm, comparison. Oh, I'm not real sure on that one. A file format that contains only presentation text. Ah, template. No, that's not right. Outline RTF. Increases and decreases the slide size. That's going to be our zoom. Controls position of the placeholder. Uh, hmm. I'm going to skip that one because I'm not seeing what I think that should be. Controls position of the placeholder. Reusable slide design, that's our template. Presentation saved as a video. And symbol fonts, those are wingdings. All right, so layout, I'm hoping, is G. Now I hit done. And yes, I got all of those correct. All right, let me come out of here and go into our next exercise, which is guided project 1-2. And before I go there, I forget this is where I want to stop and I want to come to Lab dot Oh my goodness. Hang on. Because I am not sure what happened there. Lab dot edu. And I launch Google. That's going to take me to my course shell. You can see how fast that was compared to normal. I'm plugged in directly to my router as opposed to running through Wi Fi. And it greatly increases. Your speed, how fast pages load.
and I had to curse it. No, it's still doing pretty good considering all it's doing. So we're in comp 100. Go to modules and I'm done with all those weeks and I'm down to week eight guided project 1-2. And I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. Hang on one second. I'll get it where I need it to be. Okay, so this week we have resources. So I'm going to click on the resources and download those first so that I can unzip that file. I'm going to open it when it gets done. It comes here and I'm going to extract all files. And by doing it now, it makes it easier for it to show up when we're in the middle of the assignment. You won't have to extract it then. Okay, now I'll come back and download my start file. And I'm not going to open it here because it won't open into 2019. So I'm going to go back to my Citrix server and launch PowerPoint 2019. I do not see it coming. Hang on, maybe it's trying to. All right, one more time. Let me try it again. There we go. Okay. And I'll go to open other presentations and browse. And I want to go to my downloads folder. And you can see here I had downloaded it earlier today and a little over a month ago and then just now. Um, the Citrix server seems to be an hour behind me. I'm on Eastern Standard Time. And enable editing. And one more time, I'm going to pull this over to my right. And then go get my instructions page for the left. Okay. All right, so I'm going to scroll down here. And that was actually number one, open, browse, locate this file, click enable editing. And save the presentation. Can't do it with that there, but I can hit the diskette to save the file. And yes, I found that most people do not even know this is a diskette anymore, which is what we used to save files to. It's weird that it's an icon because nobody knows what it's for anymore. <laughs> Display slide two. So I'll click right here in the thumbnails on two. 
select the bulleted text. Click the bullets drop down arrow on the home tab. So we have bullets here. I'll we'll click the drop down. We'll select bullets and numbering at the bottom to open the bullets and numbering dialog box. And then here we can change the size of the bullet and they want to decrease the size to 80%. I can dial it in or type it in. Click the color button and select orange accent six. Okay, I thought I knew which way to go. Last color, first try, read directions. Orange accent six. <laughs> Click the Customize button to open the Symbol dialog box. And if you remember, I was telling you about adding your a picture or different things in here. This is in the area that you do that. You go in and pull a picture. And then you can pull a picture from a file. Use an icon. Right here, we're going to Customize and scroll down the font list and select windings three and what they're talking about there here's the font list so we'll click the drop down and then scroll down pretty much to the bottom windings three select the black right pointing pointer number 117 so if you see it in the list here once you highlight it it turns white but it's black before you highlight it and it should be character code 117 Click OK to close the symbol dialog box. And click OK again to close bullets and numbering dialog box. Now we're going to reuse slides from another presentation to follow slide two. So we'll click the new slide. File new. Oh, now I'm in the wrong place, sorry. I want to be on the home tab, new slide. Sorry, reuse slides. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong place. Show you my coffee cup later. It says out of my mind back in 15 minutes. Happens every once in a while. Click browse in the reuse slides pane to open the browse dialog box locate the resource files so when we go to new slide and browse And then I'm going to my documents or my downloads. And I know I download, there it is, okay. 
that's the resource file. And since I unzipped them inside of that file is a new folder and there we go. This presentation has spelling errors that we'll co correct later. Select the presentation, email content, download it from the resource link, click open, we did that. Click all three slides in the reuse pane. So we're gonna use the control character. The first one's already highlighted. I hold down the control button and select the next two and it's not working. All right, so let me try it one at a time. In fact, I already have like a hundred times and now I'm gonna have to undo. <laughs> if you saw that, that was funny, sorry. Um, it's not like I was doing before, so when it did everything, it did it too many times. And I think that was the one I needed to redo. Oh no, there we go. All right, so I need to change my bullets. That's back where we were. Now I can go back here and pull in that one. If once I click on it, it puts it over there automatically. So then I go to the next one and click on it and go to the next one and click on it. Okay. Close the reuse slides pane, so I'll close there. Use the thumbnail pane to rearrange the six slides in this order. All right, so I'm gonna want to, I don't know how I got help open as well. If yours is open, you can close that and that gets rid of that window. And now I can go back to where I was and I can almost see what I need to see. Okay, so this one says, ask these questions. Ask these questions should be number two. Uh, so these two are right. We're gonna leave those two there. And then the one that says why, which is currently number five, I'm gonna drag it up to number three. So I can click and drag write a meaningful subject line is number five so i'm going to click it and drag it up to number four organize it the last one click it drag it up to the top and then the very last one keep it short keep it meaningful All right, so it should be getting results, ask these questions, why, write a meaningful subject line, organize it, and keep it short. Select slide one, and we're going to go to the review tab and run a spell check. And correct, receive, careless, organized, capture, response, and a word I always spell wrong, separate. Spell checks complete and you're good to go. Click OK. 
close the design ideas pane if it opened it did not display title two select the body placeholder with the bulleted text double click the format painter button Press page down which whoops my num light was on page down and then click the list on slide three and I missed it up so I gotta go back to turn on format painter come down to three and it was just there. And for the first level of bullets, my man. So we'll undo that. I really can't stand that. I'm going to see my undo button. <laughs> so I want to paint this part. And apparently I gotta go back one more time. No, it was on. But if it was on, then my um, bullets would look different because that's what we're formatting here. It says first layer of bullets. There we go. Now we're not doing the bottom ones. So we'll come back up and we're going to do that on four and five as well. Only on the top level of bullet. Okay, press escape to end the formatting or click the formatter, format painter again to turn it off. We could also change the bullets for all the slides in the slide master view. And I don't think we did look at that earlier, so let's just go look real quick at what they're calling the slide master view. So this is where you can edit the style and what happens to each level of bulletin. So we could have changed that here as well. <coughs> Insert a picture and apply design idea layout if available. Select side six. Okay, so I'm going to go back to view and my normal view. Come down to slide six and delete the picture on the right. Click the insert tab. And then click the pictures button. Browse to the resources file. Mine's in download. Here it is. And in that folder, there's the at symbol. So we'll select at symbol and insert. OK, 
Okay, click with some thumbnail similar to the layout in figure 1-112. If the design ideas pane did not open, move and size the picture so it looks like the one on the page. Might need to make it a little bit smaller. <laughs> it doesn't give me an exact size, but it does say it should look like this one. So I'm, I think I'm kind of there. Right now, one other thing I see they did there. Let's see. Yeah, this keep it short is different, but I'll give it a minute. If they don't have me change this, we need to come back and change that. Um, my design ideas pane did not open, so I don't have to close it. Select the picture on slide six. Click the alternate text button. Edit alternate text. Type the description, a person showing notebook features, period. Then close that pane. Select the text title, keep it short. Okay, here it goes. So I was like, I know I gotta change that. Go to the font color on the home tab. And we want orange accent six. Last color, first row. Now that looks better. Apply one transition and effect option to all slides. So we're going to transitions. Click switch. From the exciting group so here's the exciting group and we want switch click effects options transition to this slide effects options and we want left then we're going to hit apply to all click the slide sorter button on the status bar Press Control A to select all the slides. Click Preview on the Transitions tab. Okay, so we got to see the transition for each one. 
select the first slide and click the slide show button on the status bar. Advance through the slides to see the movements in slideshow view. So I'll go back and do that again. Well, I didn't do it entirely. Um, and my Transitions are a little choppy, but I think that's internet issues. And then when you hit escape or enter, keep hitting enter, you come out of it. Double click slide one to open the normal view. We're going to go to the file tab in the backstage view and display the info area. So I think they're talking show all properties over here in this section. And type the following information in these fields on the summary tab, which is what this, that's what we're looking at here. So I'm not, some of it doesn't isn't lining up exactly with what they're telling me, but um, I can do all of what they're telling me from right here under properties. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if I hit the drop down on properties, it gave me this, and I can go to summary, and I can see it right there, and probably maybe not. We are writing. The author is your name. So type in your name. I don't need a manager company, but down here in the comments, it says this presentation is for the new hire seminar period. and then click OK to close the properties dialog box. Okay, from here we can also go to print. Once I click the print button, I can select the appropriate printer. You don't have to print, but what I want to make sure you see here is that we can go to um, print. Once we choose print all the slides, then we can choose how we want to print those slides. They're telling us here the six slides horizontal, frame slides. and scale to fit paper. Now that might be, let me see, I don't think it's under that section. So that would probably be under my printer properties. Um, but that's a little weird. It's gonna depend on your particular printer. So again, print all slides six slides oh there's my scale to fit it was selected and frame slides was selected if you want high quality you can select it there as well you can print them on one side or both sides if your printer allows again you don't have to print if you don't want to use your printer that's perfectly fine save and close the presentation so i can actually do that from here save and close um, i'm not going to close because when i come back up here if i have to make changes 
then I want it to still be open. So I'll come back to the top of my instructions and upload my file from downloads. Should see here where I just saved it. And yes, submit that file. And hopefully you made your 100 as well. If not, please give me a call sometime this week. Let me help you get it corrected and re-upload it. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great week. And do not hesitate to contact me if I can help you in any way. Thank you.